Hi, everybody. It's me, Jill. Welcome to Jill Informed. Remember me? I feel as nervous as I did when I first started doing this. I didn't entirely plan out what I wanted to say here, but let me just say briefly that I had intended to take a short break, not nearly as long as I did, but I got a little overwhelmed with anxiety and depression nothing unique. I know many are also going through a lot of that, uh, especially with last year being what it was. I feel like it just kind of broke me. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. It's just not something I really want to talk about. I only tell you as a way of explaining where I've been for so long. It was just hard to film period. I I would try and then I just wouldn't have the energy I felt like I wanted to bring and ended up not doing it. So the other piece of that puzzle is that I have just really not been feeling Housewives. At least the two shows I've been doing, Orange County and Salt Lake City, I don't know. Salt Lake City, I do want to finish out. Orange County, I feel like I need to just cut my losses there. I missed so many episodes. Well, I missed a lot of episodes with Salt Lake City as well, but I missed so much of Orange County and I just now kind of going through some old notes. I actually took notes from uh, episode 10 and I look back at them now and it's like, Emily can't go on the girl's trip to Lake Arrowhead because she tested positive for COVID. I wrote down, how is Kelly the only one that doesn't have it? Another scene with Bronwyn being crappy to Sean. I think that just went on and on. I have very little sympathy for Bronwyn. I know she's struggling, but she is so incredibly selfish. I I, I can't. Shannon was living with John. I wrote down, does John live in someone's two-car garage? I wrote, it looks like an elf house tucked in between two real houses. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was talking about. I mean, I did watch, I am caught up and I watched everything probably like you guys did too. Shane got really sick from COVID. He was hospitalized. He's thankfully he's okay and back home. I don't know what else was big. Oh, Elizabeth talking about her childhood and that she grew up in a cult, how horrible it was. She was abused physically, sexually. It, it, it sounded horrendous. Not too much else. And, you know, then I, I, I'd i kind of just lost interest. Now, I did watch the reunion last night. That was pretty good. And the other really good thing is it's only two parts. The reunion is only two parts. I think Bravo knows that people are like so over Orange County. That might be part of it. But I think because they're condensing it into two parts, both parts are pretty action-packed. I wasn't intending to recap. I don't know. If you guys want me to briefly recap the reunions, maybe I'll do both parts in one re uh, recap. But if not... I totally understand. I kind of already cut my losses with that franchise anyway, so. But if you guys think it's worth it, let me know. As I said, I've missed so much of both Orange County and Salt Lake City that I cannot go back and recap everything. I just need to start fresh. That's what this is. This is like a fresh start for me, 2021. Let's do this. <laughs> this is the recap of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Season 1, Episode 11, All Bets Are Off. I hope that you guys are already caught up because then you'll know what's going on. But we do get a little recap at the beginning of Jen and Sharif having a conversation. Sharif got mad because at his birthday party, Jen went insane when Whitney tried to tell her that Meredith and, and Lisa are afraid of her. That actually was funny. If you guys remember Whitney, she, Whitney was so nervous and she had rehearsed. Um, as you know, Jen, I'm a real straight shooter and I tell it like it is. When I was talking to Mary and then Jen's like, Mary, why are you talking to Mary? And uh, Whitney gets all flustered and she goes, <laughs> just let me say this. As you know, I'm a real straight shooter. Oh, God. <laughs> she repeated it verbatim. It's so funny. It was funny and also kind of cute and kind of Whitney. 
Anyway, Whitney is trying to make up to Jen by taking her to a spa. She and Heather took her to a spa, which was really just bathtubs outside with this gross looking water pouring into it. I don't know, probably natural hot springs, you know, whatever. It didn't look too appealing to me. Also, I don't want to be outside when there's snow. I don't care how hot the water is. You have to get out. That didn't like appeal to me that much, and it really didn't appeal to Jen either. Uh, anyway, long story short, after fighting in the tubs and Jen splashing water on one of the cameras, Whitney ended up getting into Jen's bathtub. They hugged. Heather sort of reveals that she always feels like the one who's left out and that she's afraid that Jen is just trying to be friends with Meredith and Lisa and will just leave Heather in the dust. You know, that's Heather's issue. Jen says, of course not, I won't do that. But Jen is more concerned about her own marriage right now because it's been four days and Sharif won't answer her calls and he won't talk to her. Anyway, after that, Sharif came home. They had a talk. He promises he'll be a better husband she will be more communicative and be a better wife. And I mean, I think they're good. Jen and Sharif are having a double date with Heather and Sharif's brother. So we'll see how that goes. Whitney is planning a dinner for her dad with her brother, Will, and her sister, Shaylee. It's just going to be the four of them. And I guess Shaylee and Will haven't talked to their dad. Wait a minute. It's not even Will's dad, is it? Didn't we learn that Will and Whitney don't share the same father? They share the same mother. So I don't know what the deal is with Shaylee, but in any case, it's going to be awkward, <laughs> I'm sure. And I don't even know, like, I, I think it's sweet of Whitney, but I'm not sure she isn't going to get hurt by trying so hard with her dad. I, I'm worried for her. Oh, God. Okay, so uh, it is awkward. And the dad, Steve, is saying that uh, at his sober living place, he was at a meeting and he told everyone that he was going to have dinner with his children. And someone said, hey, you should look at your addiction uh, as a good thing because it brought your family together or something like that. The look on Will and Shay's face is like, uh, yeah. Or you could have not gotten addicted to prescription medication and we would have been close all along. I'm pretty sure it's not the addiction that brought them together. It's his finally getting help, right? Okay, now it's the double date. It's not Sharif's brother. It's his best friend, Big Daddy. Which I think Heather could handle, Big Daddy. Heather seems like she's a lot of fun. And uh, she kind of goes with the flow. I, th I think she's ready for some fun in her life. Okay, so Big Daddy shows up now. He's, uh, he's a big guy. Heather is thrilled with him. She's like, all right, Jensha, I see you. You're checking all the boxes for me. Tall, dark, handsome. Okay, well, um, <laughs> little glitch for Heather. She orders a drink and Big Daddy orders like cranberry and orange juice or something. In Heather's confessional, she goes, Big Daddy drinks like a big baby, but that's okay. I'll drink enough for both of us. Eh, maybe not the right move. Okay, so um, the date, uh, I mean, Big Daddy was a little bit of a big dud. He was nice enough, but I don't think he was really that into Heather. And then Heather, maybe not really that into him either. Anyway, in the next scene, Whitney is has decided to plan a girl's trip a couple nights in Vegas. She goes, I know I'm not exactly the fan favorite right now, but I just thought we could all use a girl's trip. So you see her texting out, what do you think of a girl's trip? Heather's like, oh, that's great. I'm in. Jen's like, sounds fun as long as I can be the CEO of planning fun events. Meredith, Vegas isn't really my scene, but I can probably make it. And then we get from Mary just to Whitney, is Jen going? And she said she is. And Mary has a home in Vegas. I'm sorry, a beautiful home in Vegas. It's one of many homes that she has all around the country and maybe the world. I don't remember. But she has a home in Florida, which is where Robert Sr. was. Uh, 
I don't know what, I think she said he was taking care of the grass. Did, did I hear that right? <laughs> I don't know. But he came home from that trip and he said, I think we should sell that house. It's too much work. Immediately, Mary goes to, well, if I'm too much work, would you want to sell me? Robert Sr.'s like, what? why would you say that? You're already too much work, Mary. If he hasn't left you yet, he's not going to. Anyway, Mary said, uh, you know, I love you and Heather, but if Jen's going, I'm out. Sorry. This is not the first episode that's been very light on Mary. And I think it's interesting because I don't know where we go from here. Like if there's a second season of Salt Lake City, is Mary going to be in it? Because I feel like she films very, very little with these ladies. And I also think that Mary may not have bargained for all that would come her way when the story got out about her grandfather, her grandmother, and all the businesses. And, and I think there's some shady stuff with all that and where she gets all her money. And she might be out next year. I don't know. Oh, God. And then Lisa, Lisa's text reply is, I need to think about that, but thanks for the invite. So now Lisa and Meredith talk to each other about whether they're going to go or not. Lisa thinks that Whitney owes her an apology for telling Jen that she and Meredith said they're afraid of her, which that's not even such a bad thing to say. I didn't hear them say it. I could have missed it, but isn't everybody afraid of Jen? I mean, I just thought that was a given. Lisa's pretty upset about it. Meredith has a different feeling. Meredith is, doesn't love it. But also, Whitney threw Jen under the bus with Meredith by saying that Jen was talking about her marriage and that it's not good. And as we know, she and Seth were like separating, but now they're back together. Yeah, it's, and it's better than ever, baby. But where are they going to live? is my question, because I don't feel like that got addressed. Unless Seth is just going to move back to Salt Lake City because he wants Meredith so badly. I think it's kind of one-sided. Meredith says she's in love with Seth, but I mean, I just think that because of that, Meredith is less angry with Whitney because it was a back and forth. Like, even though Whitney told Jen that Meredith said she was afraid of her, Whitney also told Meredith that Jen was talking about her marriage behind her back, which is much worse, in my opinion. So I think that's why Meredith is kind of like, uh, she, she says, I'll go to Vegas, but I really don't want any drama. I'm sure there won't be any drama. Okay, so all the ladies are at the airport, except for Lisa, who is already in Vegas because she has work there, but she didn't tell Whitney she was going. She told Meredith. So Lisa is there, but like, make no mistake about it. She is not going to give Whitney credit for her being in Vegas. It's just because she happened to have work there. So they get in the limo now and they're driving to the hotel and Whitney calls Lisa, gets her voicemail. Four seconds later, Lisa calls Meredith. So Meredith tells her they're going to be at the airport. She said she'll be there in like 20 minutes. And Whitney, like it's obvious she's icing out Whitney. Jen had a conversation with Lisa before they went. And Jen's like, Whitney is adamant about you saying it. And Lisa goes, adamant about what? Because I never said I was afraid of you. And she said, I, I want to go to Vegas just to see what she'll say. So in her confessional, Jen's like, yeah, Lisa just wants to give Whitney the thumbs up. <laughs> you guys, they still think thumbs up means F you. That is so funny to me. Okay, so they get to the hotel and um, the guy had created this poem for them. It was kind of cute, except that he had to keep reading the card, and it wasn't that long of a poem, but whatever. Heather made a joke about how he put more effort into that poem than Billy did on their wedding vows. So Whitney tells everyone that she has planned exotic race car driving for everyone. They've got about an hour to get changed and get ready. And Jen goes, oh, that's going to be a little bit of a problem because I planned something special for Miss Heather and it's an appointment and that's like it's at the same time. 
Whitney's like, oh, okay, you can't go. That's okay. So uh, when they get to the room, I don't know if Whitney and Heather are sharing a room or if Heather was just there to see Whitney's room. I'm not sure. But Whitney said, it was all I could do to like keep it inside when Jen told me that she had planned something for you. Not that you don't deserve something special, Heather. But it's just that I have to go race car driving with Meredith and Lisa. Ooh, yeah, that's not good. But also, I mean, I see both points of view here. On the one hand, Jen, when she accepted the invitation, said, okay, but I get to be the CEO of planning fun things to do. So I feel like, yes, Jen shouldn't have hijacked Whitney's trip, but also the second she accepted the invitation, she said she wanted to plan fun things. That's when Whitney should have said, okay, well, I've... I would like to plan things because it's my trip. Or she could have told her the things she had planned and then Jen could work around that. I don't know. The other reason I'm kind of on Whitney's side is Jen planned something just for her and Heather. That's not cool. It should have included everybody, you know? So Lisa gets there now. She's talking to Meredith. And according to Lisa, I don't feel like I needed to tell Whitney when or how I was getting to Las Vegas. Yeah, you did. She invited you on a girl's trip. And yeah, I think an RSVP is in order. Sorry. It's rude. She said, what does she have planned for us? And Meredith said, it's, I think, like race car driving. I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to drive. But Lisa goes, oh, I love that. <laughs> she did say it that time. So Meredith and Lisa in their room are trying to figure out how this vacation's going to go. Meredith said, now I find out Jen's been talking crap about me behind my back, but she's been nice to me in front of my face so far. And Lisa's like, well, let's just see how this goes and see how people are going to act around us. I just think outside of Real Housewives, Meredith and Lisa would not have anything to do with Heather, Whitney, or Mary, for sure. And may, I mean, maybe Jen. Maybe Jen would be okay with them. Okay, so the big surprise for Heather was that Jen had set up a whole private shopping experience where she was going to buy her a new like luxury outfit. I mean, it's pretty nice, but also, I don't don't know. I think it's just rude to do that on a girl's trip. Okay, so I don't know. I guess Heather picked something out. Jen is sitting on the bar posing for pictures, and then she gets up and falls down. I guess they have been drinking a little bit. Anyway, now we move on to the unholy trio of Meredith, Lisa, and Whitney. They get in the car heading to the racetrack, and it's like crickets. Okay, so at the track, Lisa keeps talking about, oh, I drive this in my real life, so what car do you think is for me? I'll take the Ferrari, okay. I love it. And the guys are like, have any of you ever done this before? Oh, yeah, I drive on the track, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done it before. They get in the cars, and you may have already expected this, but I did not. Lisa, slowest one, poking around. I mean, Whitney's nervous at first, but then when the guy's like, okay, you're good, go full speed, and she's like, ah, okay, okay, and so she does it. Even Meredith, at one point, both Whitney and Meredith have to pass up Lisa, and Lisa's driver keeps saying, okay, you can step on the gas a little more. Okay, little, go, go ahead, give it a little bit more. You can, you can, go a little bit faster. And Lisa's just putting around the track. But then they show the speed. Meredith was going 110. Whitney was going like 107. Lisa was going 70. <laughs> okay, so after the racing, Whitney does in a very roundabout way, get around to apologizing to both Meredith and Lisa. She said, you know, I just, I was surprised when I heard Mary say it. And Lisa's like, well, I mean, grain of salt there. And both of them said, Mary doesn't speak for me. I speak for me. And you should have come to me. And Lisa said, the thing that got me was you were like, Jen, I have to tell you something. And it didn't involve you. It was about Jen and us. 
And we were standing right there. So that was crazy. It was crazy. It was none of Whitney's business. And if you guys watched the episode prior to that, it was because Mary was feeling left out and said that everybody was acting like they're all friends, but they're not because I happen to know for a fact that Lisa and Meredith both said they're afraid of Jen. That was Mary because Mary and Jen have a big fight about smelling like a hospital. So that was Mary trying to say other people don't like Jen either. They're just pretending. And then Mary made Whitney feel bad for not having her back. So this was Whitney's very poor attempt at showing loyalty to Mary, I guess. Mary wasn't even at the party, but whatever. It was dumb, and Whitney should apologize. So it appears as though Lisa and uh, Meredith are ready to move on with Whitney and accept her apology. Okay, so somehow back with Heather and Jen, those two get into an argument over Whitney. Jen kind of comes at Whitney by saying she can't just bring stuff up, put it out there, and then like not follow through with it. Heather's like, well, I mean, she thought she was doing the right thing. Heather's defending Whitney. Jen is mad at Heather for defending Whitney. Heather, in her confessional, said, I thought we were over this. I saw them hug, meaning Jen and Whitney, and why are we bringing this up again? Well, it's getting brought up because Jen was not really over it. Whitney hugged Jen, but they even did a, a flashback, and you could tell Jen was like, Okay. And she goes, but if I get divorced, I'm moving in with you. So she was still worried about how her husband was not talking to her after the party she threw for him. And so now Heather's like, well, did Whitney make you throw a glass? So uh, it's not going so great. Anyway, now Jen is saying, you need to stand up for me with Whitney. Heather goes, how have I not stood up for you? In Heather's confessional, she said, Jen's idea of a good friend is a henchman. She is not wrong. Jen tells Heather that the only reason she hasn't bitch slapped Whitney is because she's your friend. And Heather's like, well, then you got to talk to her. And she goes, what do you mean talk to her? And she goes, you have to tell her because she thinks you guys are good. And that is pretty much where this episode ends. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for sticking around after I took a bit of a hiatus there. I really appreciate you still being here. I really do. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.